Oh my God. So very quickly, let me unfreeze this weirdness away. Unfreeze. All right. So there's the first part, right, that I think we eventually got through. <laughs> yes, I am thinking about it. Uh, the second part, real quick. I, I know I'm only interested in this interval, so I'm going to plug 0 and 4 in, and I know they meet at 3. The negative 3 is not my interval. So I'm going to get the points at 0, which is just the y-intercepts, at 3, and once I know 1, I know the other one, and at 4. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So to do a rough sketch, I just need to get the, uh, the limits of my interval that I'm going over, right? So if I would have just said find the area between the curves and stopped and didn't say on the interval, you would have went from negative 3 to 3. So you would have wanted uh, at negative 3 and at 3, where are they, and maybe some y-intercepts so you can get a real rough sketch. Does that, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you to understand what you focus on when you have to sketch something by hand. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I just, three points is all I need to get a good I feel for who's on top where and about what it looks like. So... Now, here's a good indication why pen, the pencil is better. But I know in the first one, the top is going to be the downward parabola. I can see that from my, uh, from my drawing, right? And at zero, if I plug a zero in, the, that's got a, a larger value. So I know it's the top one. And then at three, what happens? The relationship switches. And now the rest of this problem should be easy, relatively easy, right? Integrate the polynomial, which should be easy, and then just plug numbers in, what to do. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. So that's good enough for a rough sketch. Look at my scale. Sucks, but who gives a shit? This is not part of the answer. This is just helping me set up the, the work that i got to do, right? Uh, number two. So these are a little bit easier. Up parabola, down parabola. So that's one. That's a very classic problem for these because it's a nice contained area. Uh, I'm going to rotate this bad boy about something that's parallel to the x-axis. So I don't know if anybody did it the other way. This is what it would look like if you did washers. So what did I do here? The, how do you get the inner radius? You start at the axis, and you draw until you get the first thing you, you hit, right? And another way to think about it is this distance would be what the function is, and how much further is it that i got to go? Plus 2. It's 2 further away. I mean, so my r outer is 13 minus x squared. My r inner is x squared plus 5. Two. Did you do washers or shells? Did anybody try that one with uh, shells? You run into some trouble. If you try this with shells, then this would be a representative rectangle here, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going from this. It's going from the top part of the function to the bottom part of the same function. So you're going between the positive root and the negative root. So that's starting to get a little bit funkadelic. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Do you guys kind of understand what I mean? So that's going to involve radicals, mm -hmm. which doesn't necessarily mean it's going to become impossible, but it, it certainly is a very high probability of being ugly at least, right? Whereas this does not look too bad. Do you guys follow? I mean, I know you feel like you're wasting time and stuff when you're working a problem out, and, it, and, and yes, actually, it's kind of true, but you're not wasting time if you set up the shells and you go, whoa, that's going to be, oh, all right, don't freak out, just go back, erase that shit, and start over looking at it as washers or discs, right? Just realize it's part of the process. Okay. So we don't know that one. Is that, I don't know if anybody got to this point here. Yeah? Okay. So that's the pi r outer squared minus r inner squared, the difference in those two areas that I'm getting. All right. So then number three, real rough sketch. If you, if you set this equal to zero, and why would I do that? Because I want the first quadrant, right? So set that bad boy equal to zero. That's another grouping problem. That seems to be a theme. I don't know. Maybe that indicates some kind of problem you can expect on the test. I don't know. Uh, you get these guys, and you should know from pre-calc, the whole point of pre-calc, what did I call pre-calc? I call it graphing hell, because if you survive it, you you know that, uh, you know, bam, it's a, it's a backwards cubic, right? So once I get the intercepts, bam, bam, bam. And then, so the first quadrant part of it is this, this little, you know, this Loch Ness Monster kind of thing going on. 
Rah. Poor little dude hasn't eaten in a while. He's real skinny. All right, so this is what I want to rotate around the y-axis. And if I wanted to do washers or discs, it would have to be integral dy, right? I don't want that because can you solve this for x? If you can, I need you to show me. <laughs> right? Why you I will be, you could be the master. Shells. Shells. Oh, it's shells. So then I definitely want to use shell so I can keep it dx, right? So then I draw a little tri uh, triangle, listen, a little rectangle. I located, that's, that's going to be the radius. I'm going around the y-axis so there's no plus or minus crap, right? Yes, ma'am. So would it have mattered if we did a different method? Like if we had dyed discs or washers? Totally matters, because if you do uh, discs or washers, it has to be integral dy, right? Because you're going around the y-axis, which means you'd have to have a function of y, which means you have to solve this for x. You can't solve this for x. So the radius is going to be x. So I go from my axis of rotation out to my rectangle. How far away is it? X. Because what is this? Where did I stop? I stopped at some x value, right? Or x minus 0, big minus 1. Sure, x minus 0, sure. Plug. So I'm going from 1 to 5. 1 to 5, you have to find those roots so I know what the limits are going to be. 2 pi, and then there's my radius, and then my height is just going to be the function because it's hugging the axis. So there's no minus or plus anything. So that's what the interval is, and that actually should be easy. Just distribute the x, polynomial, easy. I have no problem saying that. I don't care if you, if you feel otherwise, it's a bad sign. Just to be completely oh, blunt. It's I love it because it's hugging the axis that I'm rotating around. So there's no, uh, it wouldn't even happen on shells. But anyway, there's there's no distance between them. Um, this one I was I, I left one little piece out. I, I wanted it to be the first quadrant piece. Otherwise, I don't know if you guys realize you would get infinite because this never touches, right? Yeah. All right. So that's what I threw out. But I felt like nobody. Nobody quite made it. I don't know if anybody quite made it to this problem. No. Why did I change it? So here's what the washers would have to be. Here's what the shells would be then, right? So do you realize if I use uh, this, if I use shells, then it's going to be 2 pi times something times this, right? And I can't integrate natural log. I don't know. Man. I can differentiate natural log all day long. But integral of natural log, you got to wait for 280. Guess what? Probably the first two weeks, like, like I've been saying. And yes, it would be the very first thing you learn. But too bad for us, we don't know. Shit. So I, can't, I don't want to use it. I can't use this because it's beyond my ability to do. So then obviously I want to use this guy. So it tells me I've got to be dy, which tells me, so that, again, I can't stress this enough. Once you figure out, and again, sometimes it's which method do you want to use, and that tells you what dy or dx, or it's, what is it possible for you to do? Uh, and then that's going to tell you dy, dx, and then you pick, pick the method that allows you to do that. Does that make sense? I mean, we've seen problems like that. So everybody's always like, well, how do I know when to do what? That's the most, the wor hardest part of any math class is that. And you've got two ways, at least. Right? So, so could I solve this for x? Of course I can. Right? And this function is not horrible just in terms of intervals it's for. So I can have it y or x. So up to the function, I can do it either way. That last function, could I do it either way? No. no. So it told me I had to be dx, that last problem. So then I pick the method that allows me to do dx. This one, it's not the function saying I have to do something. It's its ability to be integrated that tells me I don't want to do this. I want to do the one that lets me solve for y, because then I get something a function I can totally integrate. Right? So then what's my radius going to be? I go from the axis out, so my radius is equal to that. Solving this for x, is that cool? You've got to get a function of y, right? If I want to do integral dy. Uh-oh. Getting no reaction. Oh, well, too bad. We're out of time here. No time for reaction. Uh, and then here's how it looks set up. It'll be pi 0 to 4, 0 to 4 on the y-axis. Uh, and then here's my r, here's my radius, 
squared. So I foil that bad boy out. It still comes out to something I could totally integrate. E to the 2i over 3, right? All right. So for those of you going to the study group, you got a little something to talk about. Um, for those of you guys, at least the hardest part of any of this is setting it up. So I at least wanted to give you what it looks like set up. So now you got something to study between now and tomorrow. Okay.